All right, we're gonna be back here torquing head bolts now. We have all the bolts in, and I snugged them up with the ratchet, just uh, hand tight. So we're gonna be torquing them. First thing you need to do is set your torque wrench to 22 foot-pounds. Then we have a pattern here. It's gonna be A, B, C, D, E, F. So you torque this one to 22 first. And you couldn't hear that click, but I felt it. And we're doing this one. Okay, next one is to bump it up to 51 foot-pounds and go through the same sequence there. Okay, now we gotta back them all off in sequence 180 degrees. So, I'm gonna do 90 and 90. Okay, so we backed them off 180. It's the first step of the loosening process. And then uh, backed them off by another 180 degrees again. Same process. This one you may have to hold the socket. really uh the first torque there that we did set the gasket and this next torque is gonna be what's actually putting everything in place okay there we go all right so here's the final seating procedure bolts a and b the center ones Tighten to 25 foot pounds. Now they're going to basically be loose. And there's 25. There's 25. Now, 
the outer bolts still in sequence tighten to 11. There we go, we have that. I'm gonna put this away quick. So that 11 foot pounds, if you have an inch pound torque wrench and the sockets to fit, you can do uh, the conversion on, on Google. Um, would be 132 inch pounds, which actually is something most uh, inch pound torque wrenches will do. So that way you can get the more positive click versus watching for the uh, wrench to just kind of bend over on you there. Um, now we have the degree angles. The first is to go through sequence again in an 80 to 90 degree angle. Um, you do not want to go more than that 90. So we're going to take this back here again. That's on Lucy. Make sure it's on Titan. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Si. You learning? So I'm going to go ahead and get this until it's straight, just shy of straight up. Yeah, right straight up. Just shy of. And then we're going to go 90 Two. degrees, Two. all the way through in sequence. You do it to a bigger number, it will something happen. Right there, you do it to you a go bigger too much. Size right, you could break things, which we don't want to do. So that's why I'm going one tooth short of the 90, at least on this uh, Metco ratchet. Yeah, yeah, you go to three, it will break. You go to, you go to like a huge number and two, it will break. Like eight or seven or 90. Or 91. And then the engine will like. And then, like, and then you need like re dart, like to build. Yeah, if you do it wrong, I'll probably have to do it again. Yeah, re dart. That's why doing this is so critical. Yeah, and and I said this is S Y O U S. You remember? Yep. But you I, told him how to spell your name multiple times, kid. Daddy's got to tell him how to do this, though. Okay. Hey. Yep. So now, next thing is to do, again, an 80 to 90 in sequence. 90. This one you can do a perfect 90 if you want because you already did with the first one, just under 90. Yeah, but don't but we're gonna go just under 90 again. Yeah, you you do, do not want to go more than 180 max. Yeah, or, or you need a retard. Or, or something will break. Or you could break the bolt. Yeah, or break the bolt. Or break, or break, or break your wrench. So first step is to tighten the 22 foot pounds in the A, B, C, D, e, e, e F, F sequence. F. And then tighten to 51 foot pounds. Yeah. Back them off by 180. Back them off by 180 again in sequence. Tighten A and B, A and B to 25 foot pounds in sequence. Then C, D, E. e and F to 11 foot-pounds in sequence. 
Then you go ahead and you do 80 to 90 degrees on each bolt in sequence and then 80 to 90 degrees on each bolt in sequence again. Do not exceed a total of 180 degrees of rotation on the bolts. And now they are set. That is how you tighten that. It's how Subaru designed it. Probably one of the most pain in the rear torque sequences you'll ever have. So if you can handle this, handle just about anything. So now we got to go ahead and uh, start getting this side back together. Get the valve cover on, get that cleaned up, get that on. And we're going to get the other head off. I probably won't video the other head. The process is basically the same. Um, just got a oil fill and a dipstick that you have to deal with over there. Um, but we will take the water pump off once we get the other head off. Uh, like I said, the process is 99% the same. So it should be nice and easy to do that too. So once all your bolts in, just snug them up. Usually a little past hand tight. I want to just compress the gasket down a little bit. I gave about a quarter turn, give or take, past hand tight on those. So, um, once you got two of them down, you can get the rest of them hand tight. You probably are going to need some kind of wrench. Anywhere you see me using the ratcheting wrench, you can just use a normal wrench. And again, we got one, two, three down here, which I'm going to get the other wrench for and tighten up, but we'll uh, skip those on video because I can't find the uh, socket or wrench I use. So either way, tighten those up and then you're good to go. And start on the other head, which is the same process, like I said earlier. Alright, so there's uh, one more bolt down here on the exterior exposed section of the water pump I missed. There we go. That should drain in a better spot. There's our water pump, and I just dropped a bolt. Down here somewhere I dropped it. I'll get it. Oh, here I'll we go. Get it. I'll get it. I got it, bud. It so, we have to take this hose off, and we have to take this uh, thermostat housing off, transfer them over to the new, uh, new water pump. Uh, this thermostat's actually new. The uh, owner did his thing with that to try to diagnose the head gasket issue, the overheating issue, and put a new thermostat in it on his own. So that is new, it is good. We will be testing it quick off camera just by putting in some boiling water. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna get that back on. Gasket's here, we're gonna clean up the gasket, get everything cleaned up, get that back together, and we can get that other head on. That other head, by the way, uh, was a tight fit, but I did get it out. As you can see, it's a lot more signs of leakage. Um, and we do have oil up there in the coolant passage. Yeah. Some other miscellaneous stuff that's not good. Yeah, and Cyrus got, and, and I got oil on my head. Yeah, and Cy got a little oil on his head when he was helping me uh, take off the valve cover. <laughs> it spilled out a little bit right on his head. Okay, you didn't get oil so, on your head. You were anyway. Um, we're gonna get this cleaned up get that transferred over. That's easy There's two bolts for the thermostat housing and then a pair of pliers and wiggle the hose off put the news to hose on if you Can't be can't do that. You, you probably shouldn't be this far in just to be honest with you so um, Get the head cleaned up get everything taken care of like that and get it all back together At least that's gonna be our plan for here So I'm gonna get that done off camera, and then I'll come on back Okay, so the water pump, I got it back in, got the uh, radiator hose, thermostat housing, and uh, this other rubber coolant hose on, and got that back in place. So now I'm going to tighten the bolts on it. It's not be tight. It's more nice 
my type. All right, so these don't go that tight, but uh, get them a little past snug and you should be good. Be careful not to thrip, strip out the threads. Got one that's not lining up, I'll have to go under and uh, deal with that there. All right, we got this head back on. There's a bolt that holds the dipstick in place there. Um, there's a coolant tube we'll have to put back on there once uh, we get that all back together. But uh, for now, we're going to get back onto the timing cover. The water pump's on, as you've seen previously. Um, so now we're going on to the timing belt, timing cover, getting that back together. And we're going to get the uh, bottom half of the engine back together and then the top. Just because that's the way I feel like doing it. Honestly, if you felt like finishing up over there, you could. Doing the timing cover last, it's whatever. Off so. That's a we got to go ahead and match up our new pulleys, get the right bolts and everything. So that goes with that one. This gets that one. Barely see that, but okay. And then this one is that. And I also put the uh, bolts in the way they go, so we know what's what and how everything's going to set up. So um, our tensioner is the last part. right here and you can see there's a pin so the good news is putting everything back together you can put the tensioner on last now where's the one? and we'll deal with that in a minute because there's a little o-ring in there it goes into okay so what we got going on here we have a little bump on either side here to go around to our uh, pulleys so the one with the flange, I think goes on top, and this one goes on the bottom. Double check just to be sure. Okay. Alright, so the smooth pulley is on top, and the flange pulley is on the bottom. It's going to go around like that for now. And then we're going to make sure, once I get the uh, pulley belt bolts tight, we're going to make sure all of our timing marks are lined up where they need to be. Review that one more time.
Okay, this is a little hard to show you. You can see the square lines up with that mark, which lines up with this mark right here. Usually you have to clean this one off. The right side, there's that mark there. Lines up with that notch there. And then the left side, that mark there has to line up with that casting line there. So. Okay, after a bit of uh, research and all, I've determined there's a couple ways to deal with this. Um, unfortunately, they are all quite a pain in the rear. And there's no real good one. So, get it set up like this. Around both cams, the cam timing marks in the right spot. Uh, tensioner on and this idler on. Okay, you can see. Then you go ahead and you put this groove pulley on. Apparently, you got to get it right up by the water pump, and it's going to be a bit of a hassle. Clearly seems like there is no way this is going to do this, but we are going to attempt very hard, and I don't like doing this with aluminum threads, but occasionally you have no choice. Alright YouTube. This thing has made me mad. <laughs> I got it on though. So apparently Gates belts are known for being really tight. This isn't a Gates belt, but it was really tight. So what I had to do is this pulley here was left out. This one was loose. The tensioner was loose. The tensioner is just loose enough for that pin to come up over the the pin it rides on there, you can see. The pin that tensioner rides on sits out. You need that extra little millimeter. Okay. Then you get this run here and this run here super tight with your marks lined up. Use your clamps to hold it in place. Then you go ahead and go around this pulley here and you pry it and pull it. And I used a screwdriver, I hate to admit it, but I did. Um, up over your water pump pulley. And then from the bottom, you come in here and you push up, putting this pulley in. You want to leave this one loose enough to, you know, pivot some. Um, pretty much get everything in there just enough to hold it. And do it this way. It is a royal pain for this belt. Um, get a Subaru belt. <laughs> From everything I've seen, Subaru belts are easier to do. But there you go, I'm gonna tighten all the pulleys down, which includes this one, this one, this one, the tensioner pulley, and get the cover back on. So, I'm gonna tighten those down off camera and then I'll show you putting the uh, timing cover back on. All right, so everything's tightened up. Um, Hopefully spinning it over is going to give us what we need as far as uh, getting the belt lining up where it needs to go. So right now, um, I know where everything's at. I know it's all sitting well. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the balancer on and spin it over and pull this pin once I know everything's going to be set right. Alright, so I put the crank bolt in, turned it over, at least uh, I gave it a full rotation, everything lined up, double check to make sure everything here is tight. Check that one, I think that's tight. Um, 
yeah, double check to make sure everything's tight. And then got it back to uh, top dead center where it needs to be. We're going to double check one last time. Make sure tensioner bolt is tight. They may have not tightened that from the factory. So we're good. Okay. So now move on to the timing cover. Just really simple and easy. I got it right here. Um, there's some gaskets in here. Are they worth replacing? Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, it's not a fully sealed system. So, we're just going to go ahead and uh, do what we're going to do here. And we're going to put it over top. I'm going to ignore the gaskets because, in this case, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Okay, there's little alignment tabs down there. Um, yeah, see, most of the gaskets are still on here. And they're in decent shape. That one's missing. But that's not going to hurt anything. And if your set comes with new gaskets, you can put them on. You got these ton of 10 millimeter bolts. So we're just going to start them all in and tighten them all down. Time to cover bolts are on. Okay. Our dampener came with a new keyway. However, the keyway retains both the dampener, well, drives both the dampener and the timing gear. So we will not be needing a keyway. But you do want to line that up. And the keyway seems to be dead down. So you just take this here, see the hole, put the hole dead down, and work it around, get it on. You can check to make sure you're lining up, just like we are. A few taps with something. And then we have our big bolt. <laughs> Crank bolt's a 22 millimeter. Honestly, on this engine, it probably should have been replaced. But... Right now it is what it is. Because the socket still fits on it. There we go. Fortunately, my half-inch drive big ratchet is out on loan right now, so it looks like I'm breaker barring it. You can see the pulley slash balancer seating in, and eventually this is going to get tight. I think it's right about here. Yep. So that gets tight. Turn the engine over a hair. Put a bar in. Get this tightened down. Basically tighten it the same way I loosened it, which involved going through the uh, transmission inspection hole to the flex plate. So, 
Got a bouncer on, cover on. Um, we got a water pipe to put in quick. A couple little bolts for that. And it's uh, coming together, so it's basically all uphill from here, which is the good news. We have this coolant hose here that I uh, took apart, took out. And that's going to go down through here, roughly in that location for now. And underneath there's a hose it goes into that comes off the water pump, that 90 degree hose. So I'm going to crawl under there and put that in quick, and we'll put those bolts in. Okay, got that on. There we are. Here we go. These little bolts. Get one back here. One up here. down here for the dipstick. Bolts the dipstick to the head. We got those on. You can see. Can you see over there now? So there and over here, AC compressors kind of in the way or two uh, O-rings that were for that uh, coolant tube. If you recall that, that's gonna be the next thing that's gonna have to go on is that coolant tube. So we're gonna get that in place and on. Um, and the oil fill because you can move the manifold out around that so we'll get those two on and in place and move on to the next step so we're gonna have to clear this off now and I'm gonna clean up the bottom of this coolant tube here real quick and just get that all uh, nice and pretty so we can Get its seat back on. We'll do that off camera because of the loud noises. Okay, so we got our coolant tube. It was up in here and to right about there. Fortunately, this particular one's fairly corroded. Some of these bolts are really corroded in there. So the coolant tube is on. I put the new seals in before that. Um, I think I missed that. Thank you, Cole. You can bring this up to this back in this truck one in place. Warning, don't be a mechanic, bud. All right. So now we have our oil fill tube, which if I recall goes about like that. Yes. I'll wedge that down in there. So 
two bolts started, run it in. And uh, the EVAP hose, I removed it from this side, uh, valve cover. So we're going to put it back in. That was just to make it easier to access that. Uh, this crossover piece, if you look in the back, the tube right here, which one of your heater hoses goes on. And I'm pretty sure this is going to go up over top. Yes, it is. We got to put that on. And we gotta tighten up the clamp. Okay, there we go. Clamp's tight. So, going back together really ain't too hard. Um, as you recall, I tore the intake manifold apart pretty good. And I'm going to zip tie all the stuff to the bottom of that and get that back in place before we uh, try to start this up. I'm going to probably start it up for a few minutes with the radiator out just to uh, make sure it runs and we got fuel and everything else, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, right now we got to get the intake manifold in place to make it run. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that all tied up and ready, and then hopefully be able to get that in place at least. Okay, YouTube, we got the intake manifold uh, somewhat put back together, and we have our gaskets here. Um, they're all in place and doing their thing. So, uh, got everything cleaned up. We're literally ready to get this manifold back on. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, lay it in place. There's little guide pins you may or may not be able to see. But uh, they're going to guide you right where you need to be, which will be nice. Okay, actually the guide pins just hold the uh, gasket, apparently. So, good enough. You can either, you can even use the bolts. So we got them all in just a little bit there. Start hooking things back up like the vacuum hoses and the electrical. Make sure we got all that and it's all going in the right place. Uh, power steering is not going to get hooked up right now yet. Uh, we will need this sensor here which is your crank position. And that is a temperature sensor. And I think goes to the alternator. So we won't need that one. We have a cam position over here, which was hanging off the side. We have our knock sensor back over here. It's a three 
wire connector down here, which is actually, I saw it. should have all the uh, wiring that's necessary to make this run. Obviously have our fuel lines here. These two ran through the clip up on the fuel filter. So we'll tuck those back in there. Get them down here. And the bigger one obviously goes the big one, smaller one to the smaller one. Should be. Should be this way, if I recall. Yep. Okay. This ground, if I recall, went up there. Yep. So this ground runs up to the firewall. We have a hose here for the uh, vacuum booster. So now we know we got pretty much everything where it needs to go. We can start tightening things down. Fold it up. We got to do the exhaust. Um, just pretty much just put the gasket in and put it up there. Ain't much to the exhaust there. Uh, this is automatic, so I may just put everything else back together and then run it that way. I think that'll probably be our best bet. Usually, I like to do a little bit of a test run on things. Uh, usually at this stage But being automatic and the training lines are just barely pinched off. I'm sure it's going to create some kind of pressure I don't want to create a huge leak with that um, We'll put it back together Gotta take it apart. You gotta take it apart. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do But I don't really foresee any issues with it. So we should be good. So we're gonna get everything else back together, too um, Some of these are gonna be a little hard here as far as the accessory mounts go so, put it on reverse of what we took it off. So at least what I think the reverse of what we took it off. So these, this particular set has numbers on it, um, one, three, two, four. So 
so it makes it very, very easy to get correct. That's going to button up this side. So, we do have these PCB hoses here. They go up into the intake tract, which won't be going on quite yet. Um, neither will accessory pulleys. We'll just get them in place and mounted so we don't have to deal with uh, them moving around and such. Um, so, if we go to the other side. Okay, so plug wire number two these are a little harder to get in it's a little tighter over here but not too challenging I'm gonna run that one up through the keepers plug that in we have number four same ordeal. All right, if we move this out of the way, we can go grab the mount that goes in here. At least get that in place. Something weird with this AC mount. That, that's it. Okay. Now I recall.
make sure they route in the right location. There's little tabs on this one that keep them from uh, jumping out there. And there's another one matching. You can even see that. Yeah. You can. So little tabs there. Keep a cable from jumping out. Slip it behind that tab and you're on. So throttle cable's on. This was down over here and clamped on to hold this on. So little, little things. Um, we're going to deal with all that here in a few minutes after we get it started up and make sure we're going to have uh, no running issues on it actually. So that's going to be the uh, key we're looking for there. Once we know we have no running issues, we'll put everything back in uh, the rest of it back together, fill up the coolant, and go from there. Okay, so we got the radiator back in and the top mounts are fairly simple and easy. Uh, we have the tranny cooler lines on. We just got it started and it runs. Um, I can tell you right back here, this ground is crucial to the engine running properly. So it's having the coil plugged in. But hey, um, things happen sometimes. Either way, we got it going good. So now to put it the rest of the way back together. But we're going to go ahead and put the alternator on. We're going to put the coolant hoses on, upper and lower. We're going to fill the cooling system and put the intake back on. At that point, we can let it heat up, cycle coolant through the system, and keep topping it off. And now we can start putting belts on. Yes. It's a small one and a big one makes it really easy. Let me go ahead and get it roughly in place. Get down around the tensioner. Small one first, big one second. There's a little more room. So make sure you're in there the whole way. Turn your tension up roughly where you want it. That should be good. Then you can lock in your other nuts and bolts. that one and that one which we'll probably do with the right
Okay, then we'll do the uh, AC tension. Make sure your belt's lined up on it. Now we got tension. While we're at it, you can hit that, throw the alternator, and put the boot back on. So this up here in the radiator, we're going to leave loose. We're going to actually fill the engine through that to help it bleed out better. Um, I did put the exhaust manifold parts back on off camera, and I'm going to do a lower hose that way too, just because of limited access. So right now, put the lower radiator hose on, fill it with coolant, and see what happens. Um, after we get the system bled, we're going to go ahead and uh, run it for a little bit, make sure everything's good, and then do an oil change just to get anything that was up in the valve train and whatnot and may have gotten cylinders out of there uh, through that oil change. So I'm going to use this hose turned in this direction to fill part of the engine, then put it on, and then fill the rest through the uh, radiator cap. I'm not going to show putting the lower hose on. It's basically the same process as the upper, but we're going to tighten both caps on that. We're going to tighten this hose down before we start it up. We're going to leave this cap off while it's running. And whenever the level goes down, we're going to go ahead and uh, put some more coolant in it. So uh, I got distilled water and straight coolant. We're going to 50 50 mix it by doing a gallon of one and a gallon of the other. Um, and we're going to start with the coolant. So if anything, it's coolant heavy and not water heavy. And we don't have a freeze issue because of our area here. So um, other than that, you're basically done. And there's going to be nothing really more you're going to do. And just burp the system. Uh, these are a little pain in the butt. They have to heat cycle a few times to burp. But... You know, we'll get that done. Uh, we also got to put the whole intake on, which actually I'll give you a rundown of that quick. It's very simple. So we got our two ports for those uh, PCB hoses in the back there. Remaining bolts on the rad support. And actually, we're going to leave those off until we fill the coolant system, but this part attaches up on the rad support. And you can pop that apart just to uh, fill the cooling system. So, all I got left is lower ratty aider hose and fill it as I stated earlier. And we'll make sure it runs and uh, show you it running then. <laughs> 